Hello and welcome. Today I will show you how to make a water display, how to use shulkers to store information, and how to make a compact tape-like data storage to run your display from minutes to hours. The display uses dispensers with water boxes inside them. When activated, they will place the water in front of them. If the dispenser then gets activated again, the water gets retracted and there is a line of water dropping down. By correctly timing the activation of individual dispensers, we can make patterns and even symbols. The reason that the dispensers are placed in this pattern is if that they weren't, the display would simply not work. As you can see here, if the water source is not fully enclosed, it will flow to the side, making the line 3 instead of 1 wide and also causing the water to flow down much slower after the water source is removed. So completely unusable for a display. Luckily, placing the dispensers in this pattern ensures that the water source is fully enclosed, while also having no gap between the water streams. Now let's see how short the time between activations of the dispenser can be. This depends on the liquid. For water or lava in the nether, the minimum can be 6 redstone ticks. Less than that and the liquid will not drop a pixel. For lava in the overworld, the minimum is 16 redstone ticks. So I got to work with the 6 tick clock, because I thought the faster the better. But that caused some major problems. One you can see here, the on state of the pixel was shorter than the off state, unlike the 8 tick clock next to it. And a weird timing issue with the shulker boxes later on, which led to a bunch of headaches for me. So let's just skip that part and use an 8 tick clock. The next problem we have to solve is when we send a signal to the dispenser every 8 ticks, it turns on and off with every signal. But I want the display to let the water fall when we send the signal and retract the water if we send no signal. If we use a piston to push a block of redstone above a rail, it will activate the dispenser the first time I activate the piston, but not the second time. It only activates again if the redstone block is pushed back off the rail. Let's call the piston that pushes the block back the reset piston. The piston needs to be activated one tick after the activate piston. That way, if the activate piston is powered for two ticks, the blocks cannot be pushed back since the activated piston is still powered. Only blocks on top of the rail which have not been pushed that clock cycle can get pushed back. And that is the display done. By itself, kind of useless, like a projector without a film tape inside it, nothing more than a fancy lamp. And that is where the shulker boxes come in. They act like the film and tell the screen which dispensers to turn on and off. One shulker can control four dispensers. The way I accomplish that is by using shulkers with a different fill level. When you put a comparator next to a shulker, it gives a signal strength output depending on how filled the shulker is. It can go from 0 up to 15. So 16 different signal strengths. Just like the number of possible combinations turning 4 dispensers or redstone lamps on and off. Just like you can see here. If you know binary this will look familiar. And if you don't, here's a quick explanation. In binary each position is called a bit and can either be 0 or 1. Off or on. Starting from the right, each bit has a value, starting with 1 and doubling for every added bit. So, if you want to convert a binary number to a decimal number, look at which bits are 1. Take the value of those bits and add them. I showed you an A as example earlier, so now let's use that again. Since the water falls down, we have to draw the bottom of the ladder first. Let's look at this 3x5 pixel font as a reference. Starting at the bottom, we have 0, 1, 0, 1, which is 4, plus 1 equals 5, and above that we have the same. Then comes 0, 1, 1, 1, which is 4, plus 2, plus 1 equals 7, and then comes 5 again, and then 7 again. But don't worry, you don't have to do that all yourself, because I already did. If you go on the road download, you will notice all these chests, with letters or numbers above them, and when you check them, the A for example 55757 is already saved. And if you hold control and then click your mouse button, you will copy this chest and 
it is not a normal chest. Because you see, this is the normal chest. And this is the chest we copied. We copied the chest with everything that is inside. It's just very useful if you later want to program the display. Now we need a way to turn the signal strength into a binary output. And for that a red coder is very useful. It takes signal strength as an input and turns that into one of those 15 torches turning on. And the way that it works is by having two redstone lines, one powering the spot torches, so the torch on top gets unpowered and turns on, and one powering the repeaters on top, so they turn off the torches on top. By having the signal strength shifted by one, we can turn off the torches below, and only turn off the torches on top up to one behind the last one. This way only one torch at a time can be on. The next step is to put rails on top. But I only want to activate when I place the shulker. So I put a piston with an observer on top of the torch. It sends a pulse to the rail when activated, but doesn't when deactivated. The rail is now 4 blocks wide, just like the 4 pixels the shulker will control. Starting from here, place observers in this pattern above the torch for signal strength 15. Place 4 observers. Then depending on from where you want to view the display, if you want to watch it from this side, do what I do, and if you want to view it from the other side, mirror left and right. Start at the right, place a block of glass, then an observer again, repeat until at the last torch, then next to it put another observer, then two glass blocks, repeat until the end, then four observers, four glass blocks, repeat till the end, and then eight observers and eight glass blocks. Then put rails on top, running in this direction, the rails represent the bits, and if I put observers with redstone lamps on top, you, you can see it converts the signal strength into a 4-bit binary number, which then can be sent to the display. It's 4 white tileable, so you can make your water display as long as you want. Now we need a way to place the certain shulker boxes in a certain order to display something, like the A from earlier for example. And for that we can use dispensers, placing and pistons breaking the shulkers and it will end up in the chest below. But like this, the dispenser will choose a random shulker box, because it always chooses a random slot when it gets powered. So yeah, it's a great randomizer, but not very useful for us, because we want to control exactly which shulker box to place. So that is where something like this comes in. This is an 8 tick clock, and it activates the circuit every 8 ticks. As you can see, it breaks and places the shulker box. Alright, here we see both sides get powered, the piston gets pushed down, and this redstone line gets powered. Then, the redstone torch gets unpowered, and the item can flow from the hopper into the dispenser and from the chest into the hopper. Then the piston retracts and the observer powers the dispenser which then places the shulker box. And this continuously happens until the chest is empty. Right now you can put 54 shulkers in the chest and this can run the display for 54 times 0.8 is 43.2 seconds, since 10 redstone ticks is 1 second and our clock is 8 redstone ticks. So every 0.8 seconds a new shulker will get placed. But I want to be able to save more than one chest. And I also want the shulkers that just have been red, which right now end up in the bottom chest, to travel back to the top chest. So I can indefinitely place a shulker every 8 ticks. To be able to do that, we need to solve a few problems. First, you can't fill a chest that is being emptied, because then the following will happen. The first choker gets taken from the chest, so the first slot is empty. But if you then connect the chest with more chokers to it, the first slot will be filled again. 
if I then want to take out another shulker, it gets taken from the first slot again. So the chest that is connected to the first chest will get emptied first. To fix this, I put two chests leading into the dispenser. One that can get emptied and another one that can be filled. And this is where this little contraption comes in. When it gets a pulled, it will either unpower the left or the right side, depending on where the target block is. But it does one more thing. To get a shulker from this chest to the dispenser, it needs two pulses. The first pulse allows the shulker to go from the chest into the hopper, and the second pulse allows the shulker to leave the hopper and enter the dispenser. So if I would just change from pulsing one hopper to the next, there would be no shulker placed for one cycle. To fix this, the contraption will unlock both sides while it changes. So first one side get pulsed, till the last shulker has left the chest and is in the hopper. Then it will power both sides. So the last shulker of chest A can leave the hopper and the first shulker of chest B can enter the hopper. This makes the continuous placing of shulkers every 8 ticks possible. Now we need to find a way to add more chests and we need to transport the shulkers from the bottom to the top. I started using different colors to differentiate between the circuit. This makes it easier to keep an overview and follow signals. Yellow is for the water display we covered in the beginning. The display is then controlled by the signal strength through binary encoder, in orange. Then there is the blue circuit that switches which hoppers are locked and also which chest feeds into the hopper. And the grey circuit is directly connected to the clock, so it sends a pulse every 8 ticks. All other circuits are connected to the grey circuit, like this counter, which counts up to 54 and then sends a signal over the blue line. The blue line then switches the chest which feeds into the dispenser. That way a chest can get completely emptied before we read from the next chest. The item lift is also connected to the grey circuit. And there is a delayed signal going to the display. Let's see the display in action and go over what happens every 8 ticks. And by the way, if you expand the display, as you can see, a lot of things don't have to be tiled. Let's start the clock and slow down time. Right now this chest is full, but with a pulse coming from the clock going to the switcher, the first shulker leaves the chest and goes into the hopper. Then, 8 ticks later, with the next signal from the clock, the shulker leaves the hopper, enters the dispenser and gets placed. Then a comparator reads the fill level of the shulker and gives in the redstone signal strength as output. That goes into the red coder, which activates a specific piston. The observer then powers the rail above and there are observers activating specific rails. The signal then enters the display and pushes redstone blocks on top of the rail. One tick later, a delayed signal from the clock activates the reset pistons. They push blocks off the rail that are not wanted and after that the signal activates the dispensers which then place or retract the water. ATX after the shulker is placed it gets broken, picked up by the hopper and then goes into the dropper elevator, which then instantly transport the shulker up. Then it enters the chest on the top and either goes left or right, depending on where the redstone block is. It can only enter the hopper that has no redstone block next to it and is unlocked. Now let's talk about the feature that gave me the most headaches, the switching between chests. So there can be an infinite loop of shulkers being placed and broken. The thing that makes it so hard is the fact that the switching must be very precise. The timing at the switch at the bottom is easy. You just pulse it once every 54 clock cycles. But timing the pistons that push the redstone blocks is much harder. It takes extra pulses for the shulker to end up on top. So it needs to be activated after the switcher. Transferring shulkers to hoppers also takes time. So the pistons that push the redstone blocks, switching which hopper are locked, need to be activated a significant amount of time after the switches, switches chests at the bottom. Let's look at the switch in action. When the counter has counted to 54, it sends a signal, which then gets sent to the switcher in the bottom. 
This switcher moves the target block and now shulkers get taken from the other chest. One clock cycle later, this hopper clock gets activated. Then after some time, the clock sends a signal to the piston, which then changes the position of the redstone blocks. This is exactly timed so that the blocks get moved just after the last shulker enters the chest and it is full. If the pistons are activated too early, the last shulker could get stuck in the hopper. Or it could even enter the wrong chest, which then would mess up the order of the complete chest that would follow. If the pistons are activated too late, the first shulker of the next chest would end up stuck in the hopper. And this would also mess up the order of all shulker boxes that follow. When I was still using the 60 clock, I just couldn't get this timing right. And that was because instead of one every six tick, two shulkers would arrive in pairs. And this had to do with the speed at which hoppers pick up items. So the only way to increase the speed with which we can read data is to use more than one slice. One slice is 4 bits every 8 ticks, which equals 5 bits a second. Next to it we have 8 slices, so 40 bits a second. You don't even have to place them all in a row, you can place them in a grid for 320 bits a second, or even in a cube for 2560 bits a second, or more commonly used 320 bytes per second, since 8 bits is 1 byte. For reference, a page of text is about 2 kilobytes, so it would take 6.25 seconds to load with a cube, and 53 minutes to load it with a single slice. But it can save information for anything, lines of codes, note block music, water displays, traditional displays, firework shows, whatever your imagination holds. I wonder if it would be possible to play an mp3 file with this, but... Good mp3 audio is between 128 and 300 kilobytes per second, so we would need 1000 cubes or 512,000 slices. They would place 512,000 chalkers a second. I haven't tested that, but I suspect that would lag the game a little. I assume most of you will be using Mavica to build it, but I still recorded me building a slice. Play it at 0.25 for normal speed.
All right, make sure all the observers are on the correct setting. These are all on three and this is on one. All these are on two. And then we have down here observers that are on two. These are on one and these are on two also. Then put 10 items in the hopper counter or in the hopper clock and in the counter here. Put 54 items in total. Make sure this block is here and not here. Oh, and don't forget to add this and that's it now it should work when adding more slices you don't need to add the hopper clock or the item counter also the delay to the display doesn't need to be built again but on the decoder you need to switch between powered rails and activator rails there are five instant wires in total connecting all the modules two on top yellow for the screen reset and blue to switch the position of the redstone blocks. Then there are three wires down below for the item lift and the grey and the blue one again. I made a sheet that can help you program the screen. Just draw whatever you want, then it will output here which circles you have to place and in what order and which slice to draw that. Right now you still have to put the circles in the chest by hand but in the future I will make something that does that for you. Okay, when filling the chest, first go down and check the position of the target block. They should all be in the same position. Then go up and the chest above the target block will get emptied. So you don't fill that. You fill the one next to it. This one. And then you go up in a zigzag pattern, basically. This chest, this one, this one, this, not this, and that's it. If the target block is on the other side, you start with filling this chest and then go up here. Make sure the redstone blocks are also in the correct position compared to the target block. If the target block is looking in this direction at the right, then the redstone block here should be right and the redstone block here should be left. Is the target block left? Those two should be swapped. And if you want to make this in survival, I will also put a shulker fill level copy machine in the world to download. That way you don't have to fill all the shulkers to the correct level by hand. I filled the first chest in every slice, now let's see how that looks. If you want to see more projects in the future with this memory, make sure to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and till next time.